those infamous type 4 canal bifidities, those deep splits. How to see them, how to find them, how to treat them. Stick around. I'm Bill Nudera. Welcome to my channel dedicated to clinical endodontic education. The first step to managing these deep canal splits is just recognizing the fact that you're dealing with one. And it starts with reading our radiographic imaging. We're treating tooth number 31, the lower right 7, and I'm going to draw your attention to that distal root complex. The PA suggests an external root morphology of two separate roots with at least two portals of exit. Follow the PDL lines. One, two. Now let's follow the canals. The internal canal configuration is consistent with the external root morphology. We see one root canal system in that distal that splits in the midroot area into two separate canals. If we look at that distal root canal anatomy internally, the distal canal just disappears. This is something called a fast break. This is a classic radiographic sign of a canal division. In this case, the fast break is happening at the mid-root level. As we scroll down the axial plane, at that level of that fast break, we see that that external root morphology begins to change. It goes from a kidney-shaped to two separate lobes. But the real value when planning the treatment approach for these type 4 bifidities is held in that coronal plane because the anatomy in this plane is clearly visible. We can also see that there's an hourglass shape as that pulp chamber narrows down to a single distal canal orifice that widens back out prior to dividing in those two separate canals. When I access this tooth and get into this pulp chamber, I don't expect to see two separate distal canals, nor do I expect to see one broad canal system. The first step in our process involves measuring the distance from the occlusal reference point down to the level of the bifidity. If you don't have a scan or choose not to take a scan, you're going to have to rely on your PA. Although it's really just a rough estimate, it's still helpful. When we initially assess this distal canal and start placing the hand file in there, there's really only one of three things that this file is going to do. Number one, the file is going to naturally deflect to the lingual and advance into the apical third. Number two, the file is going to naturally deflect to the buccal and advance into the apical third. Or number three, the file is going to hit an abrupt mid-root stop and fail to advance beyond that point. And what's really happening here is the tip of that file is running right into the top of that furcation area where that canal splits. If the third scenario happens to you, you can take your file stopper and place it on a reproducible reference point, measure that distance. This is the level of the canal bifidity. So how do we manage these canals? If we find ourselves in scenario one or two where the file naturally found a canal system, we have to understand which canal system it naturally followed. This can be done by taking two radiographic images, one straight on and one shifted slightly to the mesial or to the distal, and then we can use something called the buccal object rule. The buccal object rule is something we learned in dental school during radiology rotation, and it helps us determine that buccal lingual or buccal palatal orientation of three-dimensional objects in two-dimensional projection imaging. The rule is simple. If the object moves in the opposite direction of the shifted beam, the location of the object is on the buccal. This is a great technique to use when the file orientation can't be determined any other way. Another way to help determine what canal your file is in is just look at the position of the file with relation to the cable surface. If the handle is leaning up against the lingual wall, there's a real good chance that that file is in the buccal canal. If the file is leaning up against the buccal wall, there's a real good chance you're in the lingual canal. With these first two scenarios, once you understand the position of that original file, you can then start looking for the other canal system. And the first thing I go to is simple file repositioning meaning I try to angulate the file into that second canal by coming in from the exact opposite orientation that the first one went into. And sometimes we get lucky. If that's the case and we're successful at navigating and negotiating both of these canals with just simple file repositioning, great. That would be our best case scenario. But now let's see we're dealing with scenario number three or file repositioning was unsuccessful within scenario one or two. A mistake that I see many less experienced clinicians make when learning how to manage these types of type 4 splits or these bifidities is deep troughing. They immediately reach for their ultrasonics and begin widening these canals out in the buccal lingual direction, trying to visualize where that split is apically. Endodontics is all about visualization. 
but we visualize with our hands as much as we visualize with our eyes. The information we get from our tactile sense and what our fingers are telling us that file is doing is just as valuable as what we're seeing. It's not an absolute prerequisite to see everything visibly. We can feel and we can use that tactile sense to help us get clues on anatomical variations, which means that the freehand ultrasonic troughing approach in most of these scenarios is way too aggressive and frankly, in my opinion, unnecessary. It comes with significant risk. The more conservative method to approaching something like this is strategic file bending. Strategic file bending involves placing a bend in the last one, two, or three flutes of this file. Not those hockey stick bends or those long sweeping bends, but bends in the first one, two, or three flutes. Once that file is bent, make sure you take that silicone stopper and align it in the direction the file is bent. Then measure and adjust the file to the predetermined estimated target vertical depth that you determined prior. Place that file in the canal with the bend facing either the buccal or lingual direction and use those tactile senses to feel and find that canal. The theory behind this technique involves file deflection. Instead of the file running straight into that furcal stop, the file bend will deflect the file into one direction, either the buccal or lingual, depending upon the position of the file in the canal. That's why setting the stopper is so important because we can't see that bend once that's in the canal. But that stopper marker will help us understand the orientation of that file within that canal. Once that first canal system is located, repeat the process and go and start looking for the second one. So I'll passively enlarge these canals by hand using something called the passive step back technique. The passive step back technique is a hand filing technique that removes mid root interferences by using successively larger hand files in sequential order, each larger file advancing shorter than the last. Not only do we want to be passive with this technique, but we want to use it in the presence of a lot of irrigation solutions that gets refreshed frequently. The more aggressive you are with this technique, the more at risk you are to creating a ledge. Once you're able to consistently enter both canals unobstructed, then you can freely take your engine driven instruments in and follow your normal shaping protocols as well as your normal irrigation protocols. This is the final result of using these techniques. This bifidity was successfully managed with little to no enlargement of the coronal portion of that distal canal, and a conservative canal shape was maintained. I'm certainly not saying that this is easy to do, but what I am saying is, this is how it's done. But if you're motivated and you practice these techniques, there's no reason why you can't apply these clinically. I hope you've gotten something out of this video today, and I hope you're able to treat all those deep bifidities in the future. Check out some more of my videos, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm Bill Nudera. Thanks for watching.